Welcome back to Factor Fictional. I'm Veronica Belmont. And first off, a huge thank you for all the great feedback for our episode on dragons recently. I have to say, like I said in the episode, I was a little bit heartbroken when Professor Hogarth said that, yes, dragons are fictional. But hey, we can still get our Game of Thrones fix, right? But moving on to more of a science fiction topic this week, the new Tom Cruise movie Oblivion is coming out, and it looks fantastic. Now, I'm not the biggest Tom Cruise fan in the world. I think he's gotten a little bit weird, uh, but the movie looks amazing. I mean, the graphics, the, the cinematography, it looks like it's gonna be a really fun film, something to definitely watch in IMAX, for example. But today we wanted to talk about the technology behind floating cities. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but strangely enough, it's been popping up all over pop culture recently. Uh, Bioshock Infinite, for example, I know a lot of you out there were playing it, I was, and uh, I, it got me thinking about that whole possibility of, of could Earth take its civilization up into the clouds? Do we have to remain terrestrially based? Is that a word? Terrestrially? Terrest terrestrially? Terrest terrestrially? Do we have to stay on the ground? So whether you consider it a utopian or a dystopian kind of future scenario, I wanted to bring on our good friend Phil Plate, the bad astronomer, to tell us if it's really possible. And if so, how? Phil, you're back on the show again. Love it. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure as always. So it seems like the thing these days uh, are, are cloud cities. It seems very trendy to live in the sky, but it, what's up with that? Are we just bored of terrestrial life? Well, I don't know about you living in that uh, damp cellar where you filmed that show. Yeah. But you know, this has been around for a while. There was a Star Trek episode, The Cloud Minders, in the original series, where they had like a city in the clouds and, and these you know troglodyte miners on the ground. So this has been a trope in science fiction for a long time, but it does seem to be popular again. Well, obviously, the, the new flick uh, from Tom Cruise, Oblivion, is coming out today, and that deals with some sky civilizations, from what we can tell. I haven't seen it yet, of course, but the trailers show as much. Um, how possible is this kind of technology? Is this something we'll be seeing in the future at all? I don't think so. I mean, look, what's the question here? The question is, why? Why would you do this? What's wrong with the ground? You know, we, we live on the ground. We walk on the ground. It's nice. Uh, being up in the sky is dangerous. Things can fall out of the sky, and it takes a lot of effort to put stuff in the sky. So I just, I just don't get it. <laughs> now, one of my favorite video games, Bioshock Infinite, of course, uh, their city in the sky, Columbia, at first it seems like it's up there because of mechanical reasons or giant balloons or something like that. But spoiler alert, audience, it later turns out to be more of a quantum mechanics type of thing. If, if, if there were to be a technology that would be able to levitate cities, would it be more on that end of the spectrum? You can do it, but you need an element called plot devicium. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's the only way this would actually work, or maybe deus ex machinum. To do something like that is hard. I mean, when you look at the physics of it, the first thing you have to do is if you want to put a city in the sky, you kind of have to lift it up into the sky, and that takes energy. And I thought, well, how much energy does it take to, to move something the size of a building up into the atmosphere? And I calculated this, and I was kind of surprised. If you look at the Empire State Building, which weighs, get this, 365,000 tons. Jeez. Thank you, Internet. Uh, it, the amount of energy it would take to actually lift it one kilometer, about six-tenths of a mile above the Earth's surface, is a lot. It turns out it's roughly about a 20th of an atomic bomb exploding. So you need a huge amount of energy just to move it up there. Then you need to keep it up there, and you have to do something to do that. And if you want to lift a pound using a balloon, you need a balloon, you know, yay big, a yard across, something like that. That's one pound. It turns out if you want to lift the Empire State Building, you need a balloon that is, in fact, roughly the size of the Empire State Building, and you have to fill it with helium, and that's not even counting the fabric and the balloon and the strings and all that. So if you wanted to lift something up like an entire city, you're going to need thousands of these things because you need a platform and the buildings and the people and the food and the glaven. You just need everything like that. So, you know, balloons aren't going to work. And of course, in Bioshock, it didn't really work that way. They used quantum mechanics. And if you use quantum mechanics, you can do anything because you're just making it up. So it seems that if there were to be some kind of alien invasion or some reason why we could no longer live on the surface of the Earth, we'd probably be more likely to either go underground or way up into space. It wouldn't be something on the atmospheric level. Yeah, going up into the atmosphere is like 
halfway to nowhere. I mean, what are you going to do up there? It's like, oh, I'm a mile high. It's a great view, but how am I eating and living and keeping myself up here? You know, I did I did math for this. Look I at the math. math. I got math. I've got potential energy. I drew, I drew a drawing. Look at that. Empire State Building <laughs> as, like a, as a rocket. I even drew, look at this, look at this. Empire State Building under a balloon. That's I like, how I make the balloon. I like how you needed to visualize this stuff, like in, in, in a actually. diagram. Okay, it didn't math. help. <laughs> math. Math's only going to get you so far. Doodling, though. Yeah. That's how you learn Endless science. possibilities. Um, so what about maglev transportation? What about like magnetic levitation? Where are we with that? I know that maybe we're not going to be lifting an entire city, but there is some kind of technology out there enabling us to do similar types of things on a, on a smaller scale. Sure. You know, um, if you want to lift something up, you need to apply a force to it. So if it has a weight and it's, it's being pulled down by Earth's gravity, you have to push it up. Um, for a floating city, that's something you have to keep supplying it with, unless it's balloons or whatever. But if you have something like a train, that force of weight of the train is, is giving it friction, and so you have to overcome that friction and all of that. So if you have a maglev train and it's being lifted above the tracks by magnets, very strong magnetism, and there are a couple of different ways of doing that, you're reducing that friction by quite a lot. And so you can push this thing and it just kind of keeps going. Its inertia keeps it rolling. Uh, you just have to worry about air resistance and a few other things. So in a case like that, yeah, absolutely, this is a, a great idea uh, if we can get the technology cheap enough and easy enough to build it on a big scale. Lifting a train, though, is a lot different than lifting an entire city. So we know we can build high. Would it be, instead of a floating city, could there be some kind of like treehouse in the sky situation where we're building <laughs> platforms that maybe rise above the smog, rise above the pollution? Um, can you foresee anything like that, maybe? Well, sure. You know, buildings are limited only by their engineering. We couldn't build 100-story tall buildings 200 years ago. Now we can. We have concrete, steel, carbon fiber, advanced these advanced engineering uh, building materials. Um, they're designing buildings that are close to a mile tall now, and I, you know, I don't know if you want to build them just yet, but working on them and people are taking it seriously. I think uh, your biggest problem is vulnerability to earthquakes, wind, you know, airplanes, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, but it's certainly possible. I wonder what the social impact of that would be to have people who live in a building that never have to leave it, never have to leave their room, never have to go anywhere because they're connected all the time through some sort of wired technology. Mm -hmm. What? What would that be like, I wonder? It sounds like I'm going to have to give up the idea of an actual cloud city, though. Are, are we in agreement on that? I think so. You know, I'm going to give this one a fact in that it is physically and engineerically possible. You can build balloons and do stuff and do that. But, you know, it, 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 in real life, I don't, think it's, uh, I don't think it's worth it. Fictional. Fictional. All right, so I'm going to go with fictional. You said fact, but I'm going to go with fictional overall. Well, it's like everything else I always say. When you ask a scientist something, it's like, well, you know, it's, it's <laughs> fact that you could do it, but fictional that nobody's ever going to do it. Gotcha. All right, Phil, thank you so much for being on the show once again. We appreciate it. Thanks, Veronica. Oh, those scientists always beating around the bush. Yeah, but at the end of the day, cloud cities, fictional. We will not be floating our cities on giant helium-filled balloons or really balloons filled with anything at the end of the day. But will humanity continue to rise up into the atmosphere? Definitely. I mean, like Phil said, 100 years ago, we had no idea that we'd be building structures like the ones we have today. I want an arcology. I'm a SimCity fan. I want a contained world that I can live in. Um, I'm okay with the idea of living in the same structure for the rest of my life, as long as there's a pretty good passable nature aspect to it. I'll be in my holodeck anyway so I guess you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference. Well, moving on to the future of fact or fictional, I think it's pretty safe to say that there will be an Iron Man episode coming up once again. We covered Jarvis back in the day, but now we want to talk more about the technology behind Tony Stark's suit. So if you have any questions, tweet at us, or just drop me a line at Veronica on Twitter. On Facebook, I'm Veronica, and I'm always on Google+, posting the episodes there, so you can leave a comment there as well. I will see you guys next time.